cargo from this. The pandas in the new home. Dig in the bamboo forests of China like the pandas. Yoku in Hoshi. Yoku was made of plump, had black eyes, legs and arms, and two large black patches around his golden eyes. Hoshi looked much the same but wasn't as chubby as Yoku. Yoku spent most of his days sitting among the bamboo eating. Hoshin, though he too licked to it, was more of a daydreamer. He watched the clothes for horses as they flew it lazily across the sky. He enjoyed looking at the flowers. Nothing pleased him more than to be able to sniff the man in your fairy fragrance. Tall mountains stood proudly around the bamboo forest. They seemed to be reaching for the sky. Ho Xing wondering what was at the top of them. Ho Xing, are you going to eat or not? Yong Hu in terror. He looked down from the top of the bamboo. Ho Xing, are you listening to me or are you daydreaming again? Ho Xing had Yong Hu calling his name and looked up. I was thinking about the mountains. I wonder what is at the top of them. You're not thinking about climbing up there, are you? There is probably snow falling, Yong Hu said. There may be snow but there also might be some fresh, young bamboo forests up on the top. Wouldn't you like to go and see if there is? Ho Xing asked. Yong Hu thought for a while. You're right. Some young, tender bamboo should sound rather delicious. I'll come with you, he answered. Ho Xing felt happy. He was very curious about the mountain. If there was snow, the pandas would stay warm. They were covered with thick black and white fur, and Yong Hu had some extra padding of fat on his bulging to me. Yong Hu climbed down from the bamboo tree and joined Ho Xing. They stood silently, gazing at the mountain tops. You don't think there are any tigers or leopards up there, do you? He asked his friend. I don't think so. We'll be careful. Just keep thinking bamboo, bamboo, bamboo. Ho Xing said, smiling at Yong Hu. There is plenty of it here, but I don't want you to go alone, so off we go, Yong Hu said. The two pandas headed along the day trail that winded up the mountain side. Ho Xing noticed clothes swelling around the mountain top. He hoped that it wouldn't rain. But Charles he was rather plump, Yong Hu was soon hoofing and puffing. The higher they climbed up the steep trail, the more difficult it was for him. Pushing, I don't think I can do this much longer. It's hard for me and very steep. Can we walk slower? Yong Hu asked. Pushing didn't mean they would walk slower. He was happy looking at the trees, flowers, birds, butterflies and dragonflies. Panda birds walk on four legs, not two, like some other birds. Look at the beautiful bird, Sai Ho Xing. It's a yellow bee like Dragopan. Petty doer, a yellow bee like what? Asked Yong Hu. Dragopan. They are very rare and found nowhere except China. We are indeed fortunate to have seen one, Ho Xing Sae. Are we going to stop and look at every bird we see? Asked Yong Hu impatiently. We live in a beautiful country, Yong Hu. We should enjoy everything around us, Ho Xing Sae. All I want to enjoy is the bamboo. Let's hurry, Yong Hu suggested. They climbed up the trail, stopping now and then to admit a rare flower and to rest. Ey, but shallow stream flowed through the mountains. When Ho Xing and Yong Hu came to it, they stopped back. How do you think we're going to get across there? Yong Hu asked. Not waiting for an answer, he drank some of the cold clear water. We'll have to walk across it, Ho Xing said. But it's cold water. Our mouths and legs will get so lucky. Look into the sky, Ho Xing. The sun is lowering. It will be dark soon and I don't want to be wet. If those clothes bring rain or snow, we will be very uncomfortable and I will be very unhappy, Yong Hu said. Then we shall stay here for the night. Look, over there, Ho Xing pointed. There is some bamboo. It's thin and short, but we can eat it. We'll just have to sleep on the ground, under some fence. He walked towards the bamboo. Come, Yong Hu. Petty doer, these bamboo shoots and leaves are in to bed, said Yong Hu. In fact, they are delicious. I 
one that is the bamboo on top of the mountain will touch this good. He filled his mouth with food, pushing it, trying to keep his strength up. It was still a long climb up to the top of the mountain. He could see the bar from where they stood. What is up there? He asked. Yom who ignored him and kept eating. After they filled up on bamboo, they lay down in the fence and pulled some over them for covering. Number sooner had they done this than it began to rain. Oh number, complain you who? I knew it would rain. I knew it would. Now we'll get so okay. We might as well have crossed the stream. But they do a pushing didn't reply. He had something moving on the other side of the stream. Be quiet, he ordered you who. There is something moving around over there, he said, pointing. What is it? Yong Hu whispered. Is it a tiger? Is it a leopard? Oh number. Yong Hu. Silence. Po Sheng demanded. Just then a shadow appeared. Yong Hu started to shake and whimper. It's a tiger. He softly whispered. It's going to eat us. Oh number. Po Sheng watched the stupid animal as it walked up and down the banks of the stream. The pandas could hear it growling and snarling. It wanted to cross the stream but all the rain that had fallen had made it more of a river than a stream. It won't cross. We are safe. Ho Sheng Sai quietly to Yong Hu. Yong Hu, Ho He buried his head under the wind leaves, blinked out. He saw the large tiger walking back into the trees. It's gone, he said, reeling at those words. We had better sleep now. Cover yourself from the rain as much as you can, Ho Sheng Sai and lay down. The night base are never full after that. Yong Hu snoring all night but Ho Sheng was too tired to care. When the sun rose over the top of the mountain, the pandas woke up. Let's see, Yong Hu Sai, sitting up and grabbing another bamboo cane. He burned it over to his mouth. As he ripped the tender leaves off, Ho Sheng stood up and looked at the top of the mountain. The sun was out. They were number clothes and he could see the trees and roads at the bar. Let's go, he said to Yong Hu. They both dropped a few leaves to eat on the way and went to the stream. The rain had stopped it and it was back down to a calm level. The tiger one bothered us during the daylight, Ho Xing answered his friend. They crossed through the water. It was still cold and their legs and paws got wet. But when they reached the other side, Yong Hu decided that it wasn't that bad to be a little way. Soon the sun would feel hot to them. As they walked along the trail, going upwards the wall away, they saw other animals. A few mountain goats clamoring over the rock pillars. They saw many different birds, mice, rabbits, and even a few large bats. At last they reached the top. Yong Hu could hardly breathe. He lay down and rested, coughing and puffing loudly. Po Sheng walked to the road that jut out of the top. He climbed up and stood silently. Before him lay the valley. He could see for hundreds of miles. He saw the river meandering on its way to the sea. He saw orchards and farms. The city looked like a small white dot among a green sea. Yong Hu, you must come and see this. But they do, do I have to? Yong Hu asked. Yes, it is worth the walk, Ho Xing answered him. Yong Hu slowly got up. He climbed to the top of the rock. He looked down at the valley. It is quite pretty down there, but where is the bamboo forest you told me about? He asked. Ho Xing looked about. Not far from where the trail ended was a bamboo forest. There it is, he pointed. There is your bamboo forest. Petty doer, they know of the view. I want food, Yong Hu sighed and climbed down from the rock. He ran over to the bamboo cans and started eating. Po Xing stayed where he was. An eagle flew past him, soaring through the air with grace and beauty. Yong Hu, he came. Yong Hu had his mouth full but unsweet. Here, Petty doer, Yong Hu, why don't we stay up here for a while? There is a camp that we can sleep in when it's not so right. The cold air feels good. There is plenty of bamboo for us to eat and there are number diggers. The best thing is that every day we can see the beautiful valley.
Ho Shing Sahid. Okay, replied Yung Hu. He didn't care. He was happy anywhere, as long as there was food. So Yung Hu and Ho Shing met their home at the top of the mountain for a while and took every minute of it, even when it's snowing.